Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly, and we're talking about 2010 number four. Here's the thing about 2010 number four. I read it at first, I'm thinking, hmm, what do you want out of this whole thing? We sold a whole bunch of cars. Here's how much of each model. I want a sample of 2,000, and they want to know the expected number of owners in Model E. And then they want to know the standard deviation. So that gave me one clue right there that we're talking about some type of distribution here that we need to figure out the standard deviation of. Okay, the expected number of owners for E, that's not difficult though, if you have a sample of 2,000, like you could you could figure that out without having AP stats. Like E is this many out of that many, whatever percent that is, that's a proportion, right? And then you can multiply that by 2,000. That's how many you should expect. Okay, but then I read down to part B. When selecting a simple random sample of 2,000, how likely is it that fewer than 12? All right, so then something went off in my head. When you have questions worded like this, it is probably binomial. This sounds super binomial to me. Out of 2,000, what is the probability fewer than 12, which we have to wrap our head around the idea that that means 11 or less, right? Fewer than 12 uh, would be included in the sample. Okay, so after some uh, consulting of my formula sheet, let's do that. What formula sheet, AP stats, I look at binomial. It kind of tells me a formula for the mean, which is N times P which would be like 2,000 times whatever that uh, proportion is that I find for E. And then I do have standard deviation right here, square root of N times P times Q or, or one minus P. That'll find the standard deviation. So after all that consultation, I'm pretty sure that we need to go in the direction of a binomial model here. So in order to figure that out, what do we need to do? Well, what is the probability if you select somebody that they'll have a, or if you select one of the owners, it'll be model E. It would be this number out of the total. So the selection of Model E has a binomial distribution because the population is so large. Oh yeah, we should talk about that. If we pull out, remember we have the population has to be greater than 10 times the sample size and that guarantees some independence and things. So let's look at this. The sample, if it's 2,000, like the total population is almost 300,000. So I can remove owners from the population, it's not gonna change the probability that much because the population is so large. So we would expect a sample of 2,000 to contain, well, divide it out, it's, it's this decimal here, which is what, 0.78%? That's tiny, double check it, because that's super, like, tiny. We should double check it. So 2,000 out of 300,000, that's less than 1%, so 0.78%, okay, we're good. So the mu of model E should equal N times P, or 2,000 times that, that decimal right there. And that gives us 15.6. That's how many cards we should expect if we pull a sample of 2000 that are model E. And then the standard deviation, we can use the formula N times P times Q, take square root, and we're good there. Always end with a context statement here. We would expect a sample of 2000 cars to contain about 15.6 model E cars with a standard deviation of about 3.94. Easy enough. And then we move to part B how likely is it that fewer than 12 owners of Model E would be included in the sample? So we want zero owners of Model E, one owner, all the way up to 11, right? Not including 12. Don't include 12. It doesn't say 12 or fewer. So this is a binomial distribution where N is fixed at 2,000. The probability of success is 0 0.0078. We figured that out above. And we want X to be less than 12. So if you're using, like my class uses a calculator on this, generally, and so I would have them write out. So binomial, this is what we're doing in our calculator, binomial cumulative density function. Means we're adding up from the left as we go, and we need to tell what these values are. So n is gonna equal 2,000. These parameters, we need to tell the graders that we know that these are what the values are. I'm not just plugging in numbers and guessing and, and waiting for an answer that seems reasonable, right? I'm gonna write x has to be less than 12 which means 11 or less. So when you pull it up in your calculator, let's look at it. Um, what do we pull up here? Binomial, 2000, N, P, actually I just wrote that fraction in there the way it was. I like to be super like accurate, right? And then you put 11 and it's cumulative. So it's gonna add up from zero all the way to 11. And that's what we want. That's fewer than 12. So when we're done with that, what do we get? 14. Uh, 57, so 14.57, let's do a context statement there too. So that's how I would word that. There's a 14.57% chance that a sample of 2,000 contain fewer than 12 cars. 
answer their question. Boom. And then lastly, the company is concerned that a simple random sample of 2,000 owners would include fewer than 12 owners. Okay, even though it's unlikely, it could happen, right? 14% chance. And they want to guarantee that their sample has 12 owners of D and 12 owners of E, etc. So if you pull up the, uh, let's pull up the scoring guide first. I mean, well, before we do that, what are they trying to get in your brain here? If you select a sample from this population, you want to guarantee that there's at least 12 of each. So part of your brain should trigger into the idea that we should probably stratify this in some way. In other words, we're going to separate them into groups and then you pull samples from each group to make a larger sample. But when you do that, you can guarantee that you get a certain number from each group. So here's my response, which was super simple that I came up with when I read it. To ensure that 12 cars ooh, are selected. See, that's how you can tell is my answer. From each model, the company could use a stratified sampling procedure. So stratified means you, you put them in groups called strata that are similar. So all of model A and all of model B, etc. First, select 12 owners from each model randomly for a total of 60 owners. 60 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 12. Then select the remaining 1,940 owners randomly from the combined population for a total of 2,000 owners. That was my idea. Now, the answer key... Uh, I think they're a little bit more sophisticated than me. It's hard to believe, it's shocking, I know. But here's how they score it. It's essentially correct if your total sample size is 2,000 and you have at least 12 owners for each of the five car models and you use a random selection. Did I say randomly select? Oh, no. Yeah, I did, randomly right there. Good. So what was their, uh, I guess, their preferred answer? If you're going to be fancy, uh, what am I looking at here? Quit scrolling, start going. The intent of the question. Let's get down part B. Sorry, my mouse is a little slow today. So they found a proportion of each model. So look, um, remember how we found like 15.6 was the expected number out of 2000 for model E? They found the expected number for each and then they sampled from the total population of 2000 that way for a grand total of 2000, right? Essentially, it's, I, I think it's probably better than mine, to be honest. It's shocking. But according to the answer key, I mean, the way they grade it is, you need 2,000, you need 12 from each, and it needs to be randomly selected, and there's some leeway there. So I think I'm good, and I would get it. That's basically it. That is number four from 2010. Good luck out there with your AP stats, FRQs.